Hello again. Welcome back to uh, Mozart Concerto Number no. Four in D Major, Kershaw 218, First Movement Allegro. We are now in the recapitulation, which is measure 145. Pick up to 146, and this is going to go a little bit quicker than the exposition because we are now uh, talking about the same material pretty much. So we have that theme on the G string. <laughs> This time, uh, as if you watched my first video on this in this movement, um, I actually started this uh, phrase down bow in measure 58. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pick up to measure 58 in the exposition. I started a down bow because it started from uh, rest. But here we're already playing in measure 145. We end on an A. And then we go, so I'm playing that uh, as printed in my part, two notes up bow uh, and measure 145 at the end of the bar. So, but I do up, same as before, so that I can lift after that first beat. It's, it's kind of a typical um, way to phrase Mozart is when you do this little lilt, kind of a, a curtsy almost. And then you keep it light. So same thing as before. This is different. So in order for the composer to stay in D major, which what happens uh, in the recapitulation is the composer stays in the same key rather than modulating to another key, the dominant. Uh, so we had to go to a different place. In measure 152, we had that slight change. Let's see. Um, yes, so it's, if you compare it to measure 63 in the exposition, you'll see what I mean, the difference between the end of this, uh, this whole theme. So um, this is uh, one measure 151. I'm slurring this. So then I'm up bow on the second beat of 152. I'm up bow. And then I go down to first position. So I can, I can finish kind of confidently without trying to climb over other strings, just nice and, nice and crisp and light finishing in first position. OK, and then we go to the next section, measure 155. Uh, we have some some things to listen for in the orchestra part or the piano part. And you come kind of from, from space. So you have to have a very nice light arm. Keep it light. Then spiccato. None of the spiccato in this movement is really, really short, in my opinion. Uh, it's a little brushy. And uh, any of the fast notes, especially 16th notes, are not going to be real spiccato. They will be more brushy. Um, the, short, the, the, the slower spiccato, of course, is a little bit more crisp, but still not, not really harsh in any form. So this is measure 156. It's short. I guess it's short, but um, nice, and, nice and gentle. Now forte. So again, make sure you're circling here with the forearm. The, the elbow will move a little bit, but not, not extremely, right? So you're gonna make sure that you're being economical and crossing only as much as you need to. Uh, that's why it's good when you have crossings uh, like that, like in measure 157, it's good to practice them as double stops because then not only you learn how to tune them better, not only tuning, but you're also learning how to keep the bow on two strings. And when you have to separate them, you're not traveling uh, extra miles to reach those strings. You just simply do as, as needed, right? So I think there are two benefits of practicing double stops in a part like measure 157 is that not only tuning it up, but almost like you're playing double stops as you're moving. So don't try to move too much when you're crossing in quick uh, succession like that. Okay, so that's good piece of advice. Uh, one measure 159. That's on 
the string. So 160 is a quarter note. So I'm playing that on the, on the note, the trill on the note, because you can't go, I don't do that. Um, okay, then the next part, just like in the exposition, we have to listen to the uh, accompaniment and really uh, good to practice with the metronome so that you, you are quick enough on those 16th notes. So one, or rather one, two, three, four, or if you count in two, one, two, one, two. Okay, you can practice counting out loud. That's, that's a good exercise for concentration. But always make sure that rest is there, but it's not, you're not late off of it. Um, and practicing that separate is good. Starting up bow. So you have, you feel the pulse on, on that second and fourth beat. Okay, going on. So again, practice it separate if the bowings are confusing because uh, there's some slur, uh, some groups are slurred twice, some is the one slur. So you gotta make sure that your left hand is solid before you can approach those bowings. And then just like in the exposition in measure 165, um, uh, through measure 160, um, seven you, we have four measures and i do let's see no i'm counting 167 168 is more forte and then it repeats an echo right this one is tricky because um, you have to reach like a like a finger octaves well some people go go to uh, fifth position. I actually go to fourth position, I stretch. So I go to third finger here. So you can choose and then I go down for, to first position. And then I do echo. This one is different than in next position, but, but again, don't try to bounce it. If the tempo, once you get the tempo going, it's actually quite difficult to coordinate the two hands if you try to bounce too early. So make sure you're still playing it on the string until you, you get really comfortable with the left hand. Um, you can lighten up uh, without even trying to bounce. You can lighten it up a little bit and play softer. And it will be just almost just tiny little brushiness like that. So this one is tricky because we're shifting on the second part of the beat. Um, then shift again. That's what I would do. And that's how it's really phrased. Tira, pa pa para, pa pa para, pa pa para. The phrasing is like that also. Okay, then we have crescendo, measure 168, forte. Um, let me know if you have any questions there. Same thing as in exposition. Make sure you, you, you know what the accompanying part is doing in measure 170 so you get off of those beats. Uh, keep it light. And I do second position there, and I go, I do up bow here, then down bow, and then up bow. I don't know if everybody does that, but that seems to work really nicely. And then going into measure 172. So I do the same thing as I did in exposition. In measure 175, I slur six sixteenth. The first six sixteenth notes are slurred, and then I do separate. Okay. All right. So we're almost done with this movement, other than the cadenza. So here is the second, or we can call it third theme in measure 179. Uh, so we're now in. Um, we're still in D major, so it's the same theme, but it's on, in a different key, right? So, forte. So, nice little diminished arpeggio there. Practice that so you can get be comfortable on the G string. Um, so, the way 
I, I bow is I'm always trying to phrase. Uh, my bowings tend to be toward phrasing as beautifully as possible. So I hope you appreciate that and I hope you'll, you'll give it a try. So, um, so I'm going to a downbeat of 183. I want to make that entrance beautiful.